will worship these people. And if you make one statement that is contrary to Lil Wayne's music, you get crucified for it. And the crazy thing is, we've got a generation of young people that, that, that don't care or aren't passionate about anything. They're not passionate about anything. And we need young people to say, I don't care how crazy I look. I don't care how serious I seem. I don't care how I will not allow myself to fall asleep with Xbox, or with music, or with love, or with fame, or with money, or with relationships, or with girls or guys. Just understand the devil doesn't want to make you uh, get head of the satanic cult. Then it's Marilyn Manson, the great, you know, oh, I don't even know, whatever, you know, the great warlock of the East. He doesn't want to be <laughs> He just wants you to, instead of reading your Bible, just go on Facebook for another hour. Then it's too late, you've got to go to bed. You have to go to bed, you need your beauty sleep. And then that day becomes 20 days, becomes 2 years, becomes now you're in college, you've gone crazy, your life is a mess, you are not following God, you've fallen off the map, and there you are. And it all started with the fact that you were lulled to sleep by a passionless life. Wow, come on. And that's not our calling. Our calling is that we, number one, will be awake. I mean, that's what we have to start with ourselves. But number two, that we're, we're going to bring an awakening in this church and in this region. And number three, I believe in Rhode Island. Those are the three things. I'm going to get to that in a second. But I believe awakening is our heritage. Do you know that Rhode Island was the first colony, the first colony where, uh, where total religious freedom was allowed? It was the first colony where total religious freedom was allowed. We were actually a colony started, much like Australia, of criminals. Uh, of criminals. But this was the only place that would allow <coughs> religious freedom to happen. And that is our heritage. Um, now check this out. Check this out. You know the word Great Awakening I'm talking about? It was never used, but even the word Awakening was never used for the, to describe the unsaved. But it was used to describe the saved who had fallen asleep. It was always about an awakening happening in the church. So please understand this. I'm talking about New England, right? I'm not talking about it happening in bars. So just so you know, on the side note, no one was frequenting bars, so they shut down the bars. There was no crimes happening, so the police formed a choir <laughs> in Boston. In the first great awakening, just so you know. The police formed a choir. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> But, but, but the, the main thing is that the Great Awakening happened in the churches, through the churches. And just so you know, it's not like people got saved and they just went back out. Church membership is how it was gauged. It skyrocketed. Every single church and every single denomination had thousands more people coming to church during the Great Awakening. That is our heritage. That is who we are. You know that 87% of Rhode Island claims Christianity as its religion. 87% of Rhode Island uh, believes in God. Claims that it believes in God. 87 percent. You understand? That's literally everyone. 87 percent. Because you even and the rest are like demon worshippers. 87 percent and then demons. You know, it's 87 percent that say they believe in God. Then like three percent that say that they're atheists, and then the rest are agnostics or whatever. But 87 percent say they believe in Jesus Christ. They believe in God. Is that not crazy? Where are they? 87% of a million people, 870,000 would be 87% of a million, right? Yeah. They don't go to church here. They don't go to church where I Where are they? I believe we need an awakening of the people that already claim they believe in God. Come on. 